Hello, it's Sarah. And here it is, guys. I love it. And you know what's crazy is because I use different colors of clay, I like the way it looks without the patina. And but I'm going to patina um <clears throat> this one is in pinks. And I think I used black, but I I may have used brown. I can't really tell, but that really makes all the all that work basically that you do. <clears throat> Look, I'll go get my dragon's eye. So this bright red is going to tone down to be this. And I don't know if I like that. Like I don't love it because you know, I'm a color girl. And I don't know, but I'm going to go for it because I want all those marks to to pop and I love this now the only thing I want to show you is remember I said I was impatient I was kind of just sitting here had the clay out and decided to do this s well I never sealed the wood and look what happened when I baked it can you see it's like I guess it's like the sap that was in the wood it leached out like there's a big um, couple of big spaces now they're on the back and on the side, it, it's kind of like bubbled, like it left a, a texture. So I'm not really hating that, but FYI, I would suggest sealing your wood. I mean, it's just a good habit to get into. I'm going to seal it, but I should have sealed it before I painted it. I'm going to paint this, and I'm debating because I think I want to paint it red. Or... Yeah, I think I'm going to paint it red. This is called Chocolate Cherry. So yesterday, or the other day when I did my Dragon's Eye, I used black mixed with black cherry. So I mixed these two colors, and that's the, the patina color that I used for my eye. And it's super dark. It is. It's dark. Um, but I think I'm going to use this Chocolate Cherry. So it should be a browner red. We'll see. So I'm going to just do that off camera because I've done a lot of different videos um, where I patina. Uh, but you know what? I don't know. I'm going to do it. I'll do it on camera. I'm going to just use a piece of uh, deli paper. Shake up. This is craft paint. And I'm going to use an old scrubby brush and some dirty water. And let me get a paper towel. And let's see what happens. So this, you know, this is before I've sanded the wood or anything. And then I'm going to sand it all up after. And I'll paint it. So I'm just putting this on top of the clay. And I'm kind of moving in a circular motion to get the paint into all those nooks and crannies. And this is a bit wet because there was a ton of water on the brush. So I'm just gonna do one section at a time. I like the color, I think it's gonna be good. All right. I could paint the wood that color. It might look nice, actually. And then I'm going to, you know what, I think I will. Because then I'm, I'll emboss the outside. That's what I want to do. use a baby wipe too but at first I like to just pull it off with the paper towel all right you know what I am gonna go off camera I'll come back when that's all done and then I'm gonna highlight things with rub and buff or I think I am gonna just use gold rub and buff I'm gonna use gold all right so I'll be back 
so I've done half. Now look, it's not that big of a difference. Looking at it in person, I don't know. I like it because I definitely see all those marks that we made, you know. And I really wiped it and made sure I got as much of the, like, the surface clean. You know, I didn't want to have paint just sitting on the surface. And then I'm going to come back with my um, gold, I think. I think I'm going to use gold rub and buff and just hit it along the edges but yeah and then at the end we'll shine everything up with um, uh, what is that stuff called why can I never remember glossy accents so yeah see the difference this is not touched naked clay so you know, there's marks here, all those, and I have paint under my nail, sorry. But then when you see it with the mark showing, it just adds, I like it, I do. All right, so the next time you see me, I think I'm going to go away and seal everything up and sand it. And then we're going to emboss. I think I'm going to use UT. Probably, maybe clear UT. Yeah, I think I'm going to do clear because then I can hit it with green, pink, and gold and bring some texture to the sides, you'll see. All right, but I like it. I'm, I'm actually really, really happy with this one. This is a very, I'm on a roll now. This is super pretty. I'll be right back. So I'm putting out some all-purpose sealer. Uh, this is by Joe Sonia and a little bit of the chocolate cherry. And I'm going to base this whole the sides of the wood. Now I just sanded it and it did pretty well at taking off whatever that was. I mean it's basically it's just for my for this project not a big deal because this is I'm going to make this um, textural intentionally, so um, that's why, well, you wouldn't be baking wood for any other reason other than if you covered it with clay, so um, I think this is going to, you know what, this is looking more purple than brown, but I like it. It'll be fine. Once I cover it up with um, embossing color and stuff. I even have red, um, what's it called? Uh, you know what guys, I think I'm going to get Alzheimer's and I hate to say that but I really cannot remember things at all. Uh, Inca gold. So see that's kind of, I like it. I like chocolate cherry. I hear Maya stomping over here. What, Bubba? All right, Bub. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. So, um, this is it. I'm gonna do this. I may do two coats, but look, that's what it's gonna look like. I like it. I'll come back when I'm done and I'll show you how I'm going to emboss. Okay, it's all done. I've painted it chocolate cherry and yeah, there's some of that sappy stuff that was on there. You can kind of see it. Um, but I'm going to emboss and I've decided to use clear UT, which is ultra thick by Ranger. And it's, it, it is thicker granules, so it's not a fine um, emboss. I'm going to use the stamps that I stamped the background with. Um, this one is the only one. These are actually made for polymer clay. So we'll see how it goes. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, I just might clean off the stamps. And I'm going to use Versamark, which is basically a clear ink. It's just sticky. And this powder will stick to that. 
to the images that I stamp with this ink and then I'm going to heat set it and it'll be clear. Now I have the platinum and the gold but I think by doing it clear I'm going to be able to then use um, I have red, green, and I have pink too, and gold. I'm going to get out my gold rubbing buff. So I think I'm going to do that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it'll be a lot of red with just hints of these other colors. So I'm going to begin now. I think the inside's going to be a, a bear to do. So I'm just going to start on the outside surfaces. I'm not going to worry about the inside right now. And I'll probably attempt to do it on the inside. But basically, let's go around and do some heart, um, flowers. So I'll zoom in a tiny bit if I can figure out which way to go. This is the stamp that had these little flowers on it, roses. And I'm going to put some embossing ink on there. And I'm going to stamp that onto the surface. Hit and miss. I'm not putting it everywhere. Okay. Then I'm going to take the script. Get a little embossing ink on there. And I'm putting it sideways. I don't really want it straight. Hit and miss. I don't have a lot of room left, but let's put some of this flourish kind of here and there too and that's it I'm gonna stop with that and then the next thing you do is take your embossing powder I'm just gonna do it over like a piece of paper to catch the uh, extra and um, kinda shake it over and it's so, this is so thick. We'll see how it goes. I haven't embossed in forever. It's not really, you know, it might be smarter to use like a more, uh, like detailed embossing powder. So I'm going to set that aside. Put this back in the jar. And I'm going to cover it up before I start blowing it all over the place. Take your embossing tool, which is just like a, a heat gun. I like to let it get hot for a minute. And it is kind of blowing. And when it's clear, you know it's done because it dries clear. Should I put some... I'm going to get... I don't think it's totally heated either. Sometimes when it looks... Um, granular. I think it needs to be heated up a little more so that it like connects. I could be wrong. I'm no UT expert. Alright, you know what? So let's get some red. This is called lava red so it's probably, I'm just getting my water I need to refill it, but this stuff dries out on me. So I'm just going to wet it a little. And let's see what happens. And I'm definitely hitting the, um, it's not just grabbing the UT the way I thought it would. It's, it's going into the, the wood, like it's touching the wood. But it still looks pretty. Can you see that? I don't want to get crazy 
See, I think because it was wet, see that time it just touched the UT. Because I'll go over it with, I'm going to go over it with red, but I'm going to go over it with gold al along all the edges. And I'm going to hit the clay with it too by the end. So you know what, I think I'm going to emboss first. Let's try it again. Um, so I think I can go off camera now. You know what I'm going to be doing. And I'll come back when it's all embossed and I'll hit it with these rubs. And then we'll do the front too. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, it's all embossed. I'm just going to put this paper down. I know there's a lot of shine from um, my mat. Um, it's pretty cool. Like, even without color, it has a shine to it, which is really cool. But we're going to add color. See, here's the part that we did a little bit of red. Um, there's definitely places that have roses that you can actually see the rose pattern. On the end here you can. I don't think you're going to really be able to see anything until I get some of this color on here. So let's start with the red. And I think I'm going to go over some of the top parts of the red too, like the leaves, those red leaves, leaves, just a little bit. Um, what else? Maybe this thing. I'm just putting the red on the red, in other words, just to kind of give it a little shimmer. Uh, there's a red one. The, the glitter clay is pretty, I don't really want to put it on the, anything flat and shiny that doesn't have a lot of texture. I kind of want to just do um, the... <coughs> um, glossy accents because I like the way that looks. Alright, so here's roses. I don't think you're really going to be able to see it very well. I'm going to put the red on all the roses that I see. And I'm going to put like the other colors, like I'm going to put some green. I think these are roses where they're supposed to be. That definitely looked like roses in there. These are all roses right here. Cool! I love that. I think there's like one rose right here. I, I liked the rose, so I think I kind of went crazy with that. But I was thinking I would make them red to match the red clay. So that, that was my thought. Roses are red. Violets are blue. And this is just a bunch of dots. You know what? I'm, I'm really glad I cut those um, stamps apart, too, because it made it much easier to get in all the nooks and crannies uh, and put... The embossing powder in there you know so that worked out here's some roses all right I think that's enough red let's try some green and then I'm just gonna do gold but I think I did a lot of red actually I think I could do a lot more red over here sorry hold on so what would you think of this, guys? This is like a little bit of my um, Mary Jane Chadbourne class. She did this embossing on the art dolls. That's where I got that idea. And the claying, I just did Chris Capono's, a lot of her, this is a lot of her style, but it's still applique and stuff like that all these cratery things that's totally Chris Capono that is so cool I don't know all right let's do the green do some green on the outside because I gotta wet it um because that'll pull the green to the side of the piece too because we have all these cool leafy things so let's do the green can you see that Oh yeah, baby. 
And what does red and green make? Does it make mud? Red and green make... Blue and red make purple. And I think red and green do make mud. No, mud. Not positive. Oh, there's roses under there. Oh, wow. I love this green color. It's gorgeous. It has like a goldness to it. Is that a word? Goldness? I could put a little on top of the roses too because there are leaves in the rose pattern as well. So I kind of hit the scripty parts with the green. See like this is script with roses. And this and the roses with red. So it's like red and green. Oh my god, it's gorge. I don't know if you guys are getting that same effect as I am, but I love it. I love the effect. I think I'm going to put a little more red in there because I, I missed um, quite a bit on that inside. And then I'm going to come and do a little on top, on top of the clay. But um, where was I? Here was it? Yeah, this is roses. And there's roses over here. Oh, I did a green. Durr. And then I think I'm going to do... I think I want to do gold around the edges, but let me put some on this crater. And the red. It just adds a little shimmer to it. After we put all that patina, oh, that really worked. See that? After you put all that patina on there, it kind of dulls it down, so it's nice to come back and bring a little pop. And just touch the red here and there. I gotta put some green on the leaves. And then I'm just going to do gold everywhere else. But I love it. I think it turned out so cool. I'm so glad I finally did my S. I have a big, like a bigger, twice the size of this paper mache one um, S. And I think you could do that the same way because paper mache can go in the oven. You guys see that? Trying to find some green spots. I'm turning the piece as always. Ooh, there's a big greenie right there, but I got it all over the pink. I'll just do these leaves. You see how that makes it pop? I love it. All right, let's do some gold. Finish it off with some gold. And this is going to be rub and buff this time. Rub and buffs comes in a tube. Um, and you only need a tiny bit. This is called gold leaf. And I definitely want to put it around the edges of everything. So kind of to finish it off around the edge. See that? Actually, I have a lot. And you can buff this. I do buff it. I take my ugly old towel my dish towel and I buff at the end and kind of takes the creaminess off and it becomes part of the piece. I've never sealed it. 
um, with any type of a sealer. Uh, I have, with my tiles, I've used um, either stickles or regular varnish, like paint varnish that you would use on a painted piece. But I've never sealed with a specific polymer clay sealer. So I think Gail, I would have to ask Gail about that. Because um, I know she mentioned something in her last video, her questions video. And uh, Varathene, I think it was. But I don't know if that's available locally or where she got it. And um, you can take this off if it gets out of control. I need a little more around this corner. I'm gonna. I'll go back up. So you. I hate when I come out of the shot. Um, where did I say? Right here. See, I get it on this swirl. But that looks great. I think I don't think I have it. Yes, I do. Right in here. And then I do want to hit it here and there on some of the. See, I got it on that red, which I kind of like. I think I can get it on the red. Like a little bit here. Um, some of the red areas can use it. But I don't want to really put it on the shiny things because I'm going to shine those. That's just my preference. And then if you get it on your gems, you can always come back and uh, clean them off. There's still that fly in here from last night. I let one go that was in our bathroom. I opened the window and let him out. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't really want to get it on those flat ones. Oh, on top of him. Cool or what, guys? How about the other side going around this edge just to finish it off, right? My heavy handedness comes into play and I get carried away, which I don't love about myself. But I love just giving it an edge. This is kind of like inking the edge, right? When you do a paper project, a paper crafting project. It just finishes it nicely. And all right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to put this, I'm going to just um, take my old yucky old towel and definitely go more on the edges just on the embossing section I think some of the red is kind of lo I'm losing some of the red you can see it on the towel actually and I'll go back and put some on the red. Do you love it? I love it. I do. I think it turned out awesome. Oops. Awesomeness. And then the last thing I do is the glossy accents but you know what I want to wait because I'm going to do that on here so I'll be right back 
All right, I am finished. I'm going to put a little bit of glossy accents on the shiny spots. Well, anywhere that you want to be shiny. I'm just going to use like kind of a junky brush, but something with a point to it. Should have had that ready by the time I go. Okay, this is good. And I just use the glossy accents and I'm going to put it on, kind of paint it over anything really shiny looking. Like even this, let's see where we are. That's where I am, right? So this ball has a high shine to me, right? So we're going to, how about inside this piece of clay, we're going to high shine that. Uh, and I like to do these. I don't like to put the rub and buff on there necessarily. Um, oops, that was way too much. Just a coat, a thin coating and let it dry. Anywhere, like a lot of times I like to put it in these flat ones just to give them something to boast about. <laughs> um, let's see if I'm in the shot. This little guy, yep. These little shiny guys. And you can add stickles. Uh, you know what else? Um, those dimensional fabric paints. I could have done something with them on the sides. But I just like, I wanted to do embossing because I haven't done it in so long. And I really like the effect. Um, am I in the shot? So these high shine ones right here. Here, that green one, this one this red one especially when you do it to the red ones because they blend in like they're the same color as the red background uh, I'm gonna turn it this way now and start at this end I need a little more that's great when you have these tools like they all play together. That's what I'm loving about mixed media. That these rubs and all, you know, yeah, you can use them with embossing, but why can't you emboss a clay piece too, you know? And because I have all this stuff, I'm so glad that I'm finding other uses for it other than, uh, oops, that kind of, for paper crafting. Mm, I think I'm pretty, well, actually, these. Can get a little highlight. See these? These flat ones, that red one. It'll just show up better. It'll shine. Mm, this flat one. And then my strokes. I call them strokes. There's a name for them. And I can't, oh, comma strokes. I can't think of the name. Maybe like just a flourish or. and the swirly. I try not to touch the gem. And when I do this, the glitter comes out in the red clay because I used a red glitter clay and all of a sudden I can tell that it's glitter clay. I like this pink one. <sighs> this green one. Uh, this red one, pink, green, and I think we're good. So let's have a look at it. Do you guys love it? I absolutely love it so much. Cover this. You know, a good way so you don't get us, um, you just burp it, like, just burp the, the nozzle, get that last little bit of glue out of the nozzle, and it kind of clears it, and that way it shouldn't be um, blocked up when you go to use it next time. 
FYI. Ta-da! I absolutely love it. I really do. I'm so happy I did it. And it has a hanger on the back. Well, it will have a hanger. And that's what the embossing looks like. It's not really doing it justice on camera, but it, it in real life, it does it justice. That texture and the shine. Even the UT has shine to it, you know? And then you add that metallic rub on there. Oh my gosh. All right, you guys. So that was a lot. I hope you liked it. I guess, you know what? Give it a try. Just put clay on something. And I, thanks for watching.